Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good question and also it's an observation that we do make often. The herd mentality we're referring to is basically people investing in those traditional markets that you alluded to, equities, bonds, even property, uh, I suppose, would be considered the three areas that most Australian investors would participate in. Um, but there's a lot more to investing than those three markets. And what we're looking for is, well, globally, we're looking at regions, we're looking at currencies, uh, themes, uh, you look at different types of aspects to what investors are seeking as well. And also, uh, from our perspective, different ways to participate in those markets. So we may be investing in an equities market, but at the same time, we're doing it differently or we're focusing on a particular segment or thematic uh, to do with that equities market. Um, and for example, uh, as you know, and as we've said um, several times, there's ways of doing that through uh, some funds uh, that invest long uh, and invest short. There's ways of looking at ESG. There's ways of looking at uh, particularly um, emerging markets uh, as well and uh, what they're able to offer investors outside of those more traditional markets. Well, certainly I would say volatility. That in itself is an asset class. It's one that we're uh, using as a way of hedging and you know that's a, uh, a non-traditional way, I suppose, of approaching how you would uh, invest to hedge because most people would see a hedge as, as buying protection. Uh, this is another form of doing that. Volatility itself uh, is an asset class that's getting a lot more fund managers focusing on it and, and investing in it to provide investors with that protection and or to make money out of it by trading it. For us, we don't typically hedge uh, by taking out a more traditional uh, put protection or buy futures or, or whatever the case may be. Um, we're looking at how we asset allocate and, and the portfolios that we build um, and the hedging that we get from those is more uh, what I would call more natural hedge. Something that you actually participate in a market or in an asset class because it's giving you protection against another uh, event or asset class or a market moving adversely. And by that I've mentioned volatility, uh, the way that we participate in that and, and we've been using it recently for our fund of funds is to uh, purchase an index or an ETF uh, over an index that's uh, the VIX, which most people may have heard of. And that um, as, as uncertainty increases is when the price of that improves. So it doesn't have to be that markets have fallen or that asset prices are, are falling. It just has to, uh, you just have to see uncertainty in investor behavior or attitudes and the market starting to worry about potential events. And one example of that recently uh, in the last two weeks was the Evergrande. Um, concerns where was that uh, company going to meet its debt obligations at the end of September and people started to worry. Markets themselves didn't necessarily um, tank. I mean they did fall a little bit but they rallied off the back of it. But even the fall and then the rally just creates uncertainty and that drives the price in uh, something like the VIX and for us that's been a good position um, already in the, in the time that we've held it. It's a good question because it's not something that I think you can um, typically uh, say oh, I'm going to price it this way and then I, therefore I'm going to weight it that way. It's, it's more a case of what it is that you're trying to protect. Now for the um, example of our fund of funds, we already believe we've got a lot of natural hedging built into it just through the way that the portfolio is structured and the assets that we've allocated to. So if we were to look at the VIX, that's um, for us at the moment it's about 1% of the fund. But you also look at the price behaviour of the index, uh, the ETF, sorry, that we've bought over that index, and it typically lags the behaviour of the VIX. So it does give us a little bit of an opportunity to, to enter and exit um, ahead of and or behind what's happening uh, in the VIX, which is also good. And also it gives us uh, enough protection that it smooths any um, transition, if you like, for the portfolio itself from um, getting caught in whatever's happening in the market. And, and the way that I would elaborate on that is that for some of our long short funds, for example, they might have a bit more of a long bias as the market's um, uh, going along well and, and it's bubbly at the moment, very bubbly at the moment. They've still got their shorts on, but as the, they see the market start to change and they think that there's going to be more uncertainty and that some of those shorts might start to get punished a bit more, then they will maybe increase their exposures. But there's a transition that goes goes on and uh, we might see our portfolio returns um, subtly fall, not, not so much so that investors would notice, but enough for us to pay attention to. And that's where something like the volatility hedge comes into play just to smooth those returns for us.